Well, welcome, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Alberto Vargas. I'm the Associate Director of LASIS. And it's really, really great to, to have you here for this presentation. It's a presentation that is very important for, for LASIS and for the university. It's going to be a panel presentation. And also, this is going to reflect if you were curious about what is an incubator grant from IRIS and what the product that it will yield. So this is a, an opportunity to learn about this type of collaboration. So the presenter today is going to be Maribeth Collins from the School of Human Ecology, Maria Moreno from the Earth Partnership, yeah, UW Arboretum Earth Partnership, Lori De Britt from Global Health Institute, Paul Settler from uh, Botany, and Connie Flanagan from the uh, School of Human Ecology. Too. So Paul and Connie are the PIs of this incubator grant. And the rest of the people have been working on these for a long time. Um, we can trace back the origin of this collaboration in about 30 years. You're going to see that in the presentation. Salvador Carranza has also been active in one way or another. So welcome. You want me to welcome? We have the room until 1, because we have a, uh, another conference call after that. But uh, um, welcome. So, so my name is Mary Beth Collins, and I am not the PI on this project, um, and I'm not even a researcher on the project, but I've been helping facilitate um, the process of a multidisciplinary project um, with international collaborators and representatives of many UW-Madison units. And so true to that role, I think what I'm going to do is um, kind of prompt my collaborators on particular slides for this presentation and just kind of make sure that things are rolling. Um, so thank you all for being here. We're really excited about this project. Um, and the um, premise of the presentation today is to tell you a little bit about particularly this um, research um, incubator grant that we have through the Institute for Regional and International Studies. And um, Connie and Paul are our PIs on that, so I was hoping that they could um, talk a little bit about the project's overview. Um, and then we're going to dig in a little bit on how we got to this incubator project and the work that we've done since receiving the award. So Connie and Paul, do you want to just kind of give some background on the, the IRIS project? Sure. So I'll, I'll just pick up on the notion of uh, connecting landscapes. So the, 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 the notion here is that landscapes are both natural environments and often are environments where people live with nature or um, use or abuse nature. And a, a large goal of this museum project is, is to connect, in particular youth, but generally pe families, people, um, from urban areas who may not have a lot of experience or understanding of their interconnection and their interdependence with rural landscapes and the natural world, uh, and the ways in which their lives depend on that and, and their responsibility for that. So the connecting landscapes is really the museum's sort of um, principle um, and the ways in which it can be a space that brings together young people in particular from urban areas in order to connect with um, the realities of the, um, of the, uh, of the uh, environment there, which Paul can say a lot more about because the realities of the environment there are rather special. Well, I, I think you covered it well. Just emphasize that it is, this project is built around this, this museum project. That's really the, the focus of it, which is going to be But the unique environments, the, the unique environments there are something that you... Yeah, the, the museum, I, we're not... You're gonna There's going to be a separate slide entirely about the museum, so we'll yeah, yeah. dig in on that. You'll but see that it, it's uh, attempting to connect not just to the urban populations, or not just be stuffed birds and, and cages and boxes and so on, but to get people uh, aware of the whole region and the logical connections between the city and the countryside. So I think what's interesting to me about this project um, from this sort of basic snapshot of the, of the grant project in general is that we do have these two PIs coming from both pretty distinct uh, disciplinary areas. And I hope that you'll see the way that Connie's uh, civil society and community studies and youth engagement expertise, and then Paul and his entire Nelson Institute community's expertise around um, sustainability and the natural environment both come into play in this unique project. Um, and that was intentional, that they're kind of mm -hmm. each taking a lead in that. Um, so this um, 
gets a little bit more into the overview. Um, I guess, do either one of you want to speak specifically to these points, or? Actually, there's other people who actually know have a bit longer history than I do <laughs> on, the, yeah. on the connections here. Well, this and the next slide are a little bit about the long history of um, UW and University of Guadalajara collaboration as well, so I think Lori could pick up on this too. Um, the project overview and then the next slide is about the history of the collaboration we've had with these institutions. So. Okay, well, I think, I think the most relevant thing to say here is that this, um, this project is kind of like a cat um, with nine, well, hopefully there are nine lives and there have been about three so far um, because there was some really great work done. Um, um, Eduardo Santana is a UW-Madison alum who did his doctoral work here and has stayed connected through various iterations. There was some really interesting work done uh, some years ago related to public participation in water quality monitoring and all that that can mean in terms of intermunicipal governance. And um, a little while later, um, we got some global health uh, projects going relatively small scale, but there was a delegation visit by um, the governor of Wisconsin, and we realized, realized that there were so many ways to engage. There were other system campuses that had done work in dairy science that was really amazing and appropriate. There Which was a, governor? Uh, it, was it happened to be Governor Doyle. Oh, it's Doyle. Yeah. Um, and so um, that's why I'm saying this is a while ago, but we took that time, and Sal and I were there, to create a, a really robust and broad UW system MOU so that because the University of Guadalajara is also a system. So politically, that's where we are. We have a valid MOU that's really broad for everything that could relate to well-being or things you would want to do, and maybe even some things you, you wouldn't want to do. Um, and there are sister cities projects and, and other things going on. But this particular project came together around the museum, and what they wanted was um, research to practice kind of things, doing exhibits that would make a difference in people's lives, people's lives and having kind of scientific back backup and uh, I don't mean backup in a you know in a negative way I mean like scientific support and then joint programming and some really creative things that would be like what's the museum they didn't even want to call it a museum at first it's like what would a museum look like that you'd want to go to many times or that would be like I visited a museum and it changed my life uh, or I visited a museum and it made me want to go to this place so that was kind of the spirit of it and we were hoping to rejuvenate all these programs um, with um, with just a year almost like a planning grant was like one half of it where we would form teams and get, get some exchanges going so that we could develop projects for the next whatever years and that's the idea of the iris incubator is that you you have little fragile things that by the end of it they're jumping out of the box and and um, having babies and stuff. So we are incubating a number of things, and I think there's going to be more, so I won't say more now. Right. So these slides might not be in the most logical order now that we're into it, um, but basically I wanted to make sure that people understood that you know, there's a long history here with the University of Wisconsin and the University of Guadalajara that way predates uh, my time on this campus. Um, the Nelson Institute has been a key partner for environmental initiatives there and student experiences there, as has the Global, Global Health Institute, of which Lori is a part. Um, and um, this gentleman, Eduardo Santana, who's going to join us later in the, in the presentation from Guadalajara by Skype, um, is a graduate of the Nelson Institute, if I'm not mistaken. No. No. Or no. But has had roles within the Nelson Institute, um, I think, or relationships there. Yeah, right. And so there was an opportunity that was identified to do a little bit of a you know, reinvigoration of this relationship. Um, and then that's kind of how this framework of the focus on environmental sustainability, which is an identified issue in that area, the fact that the museum was going to be a new project that was going to be happening anyway in Guadalajara, of which Eduardo Santana is the lead director, conveniently for us, because he's a UW alum and he's somebody that we're collaborating with. And we already have this 30 years of institutional, you know, sort of fiber of working together. And we thought, okay, we can do this little one-year plug, as Lori was describing, that will maybe help us reinvigorate. So let's talk about the museum for a moment, which in fact is the sort of watershed thing that happened in the last few years that allowed us to reinvigorate this relationship based on the way we've set it up um, in terms of this project. Um, 
Dr. Eduardo Sandana is the director. He is a faculty, he, I don't think prior to the museum he was necessarily a traditional faculty member at the University of Guadalajara, but I don't have his CV that clear in my mind. But in any case, the University of Guadalajara has asked him to be the director of this large museum project. And it requires a lot of different skills because there's gonna be a distinct scientific curatorial part of the project since it is gonna be a science museum but it's also the roles that Dr. Santana has um, in his past career and currently to wrangle different dynamics within the political environment of Mexico and Jalisco and to make sure that the project management piece comes together with all the different stakeholders. So there are lots of goals that I'm not gonna speak to that they have for that project, but there are specific things that I think Dr. Santana views as opportunities to collaborate with scientists that he knows from the University of Wisconsin, like looking at some of the curatorial aspects of the museum, the scientific content, um, looking at how to use the museum as a place that actually does engage people and that people actually learn from. And really, although it sounds somewhat utopian, I think really to make people feel after they leave the museum that they're going to do something better for the environment and that some of these dramatic issues that we're seeing all around the world, but especially he is seeing in this area of Mexico that people will actually be able to feel empowered to change those things. So as you can imagine, that's where these ideas of civic engagement and youth development and some of these multidisciplinary themes that we're looking at in our team come into play. It's not just the science, but it's many other things. Um, as you may also imagine, there is a huge issue of accessibility to this museum. To be honest, this is going to be a very amazing, opulent building that the last I heard Snow Hedda, the very famous um, Finnish or Norwegian architecture firm, won the bid for. You can see how beautiful this museum is going to be. And this is the library that's located next to it, which is currently built while the rest of it is under construction there. Those are pictures from our trip. Um, and yet, there are neighborhoods all around this greater area where people are living in completely different conditions than this and may or may not even see getting to that part of town as a realistic endeavor. So those are some other things that we've had the chance to talk about as a part of this project. So the site is established. We got to see it when we were there recently for a visit. We're gonna talk about that more. It has a very grand multidisciplinary concept and Dr. Santana can hopefully refer to where they are in that process when we tap them in as well. So there are two aims to the IRIS project that we wrote. Um, and I'm going to have Lori talk a little bit about the way that the platform building part of it was envisioned. Well, I think the best way to share this with you, and pardon me, well, I'm saving paper, so that's why I'm doing this on my phone. I actually printed something out that I failed to bring here, so. Um, but we have some kind of core principles that, that we established. Um, uh, there, there are four things that, so part of these global partnerships is we think about what are the mutual benefits here. And I mentioned um, that doing some kind of engaged research, um, helping with exhibits, the, um, and establishing together some core principles, working through the Earth Science Partnership, which is really the biggest component that you'll hear more about. But some of the core principles that emerged from this were that um, we really wanted to have kind of an everyone's earth um, ethic to everything that we do. So everything would, ha would, pay, would have inclusive um, voices. And that while, while it is definitely um, anthropocentric in concept, you know, that, that the concept of the museum is saying, we want this city to understand um, the landscapes around it and feel connected so that they can understand how they're supported by that. But we have this other value that really promoting biodiversity is a very important value for us and it's done in that context but we want to make sure all of our projects are um, are imbued with that and then the um, the partnership just to get into some of the other core values in this research to practice there, there's a lot of um, academic this is affiliated with the university so it's like the, our relationship to the chasen right um, which means that theoretically there's a lot of ways that departments and scholars can engage and so we've We've begun that with our principal partner being um, this design program that has, a, it's, a, it's a sustainable design doctoral program. And there's a lot of opportunities for education, particularly Nelson, uh, Nelson's um, 
master's students, but there's a lot of professional masters. There's one at SOHI, there's a public health program that I'm involved with where students can get involved. So we envision joint education as one of the uh, thematic um, things that we'll be doing. And then um, also doing some research about the city. So um, for example, they're very interested in the relationship between um, transportation and well-being and disparities. So right now there's there are several projects underway um, that they're, they're interested in and if they get funded we'll do them and if not we have this more robust framework where we'll keep trying until we, we, we get something. So we've decided to be a team, we've decided around this space of social inclusion and connecting landscapes and biodiversity and human well-being and within that what we actually do will depend on um, in, a, in a way what gets funded and then of course we're, we're being proactive about that so it's not completely reactive but we we kind of have decided to be a team and so another I think philosophical um, part of our approach is two-way exchanges a lot of global work is kind of one-way exchange um, and ours isn't ours is that there are there are reasons why they would come here to learn and work and reasons why we would go there to learn and work so so far it's been two-way we've com we've had a delegation visit in both directions so in the original application for the funding from IRIS, there were two pieces that were really the focal um, lines for, for goals um, of the project. And one line or aim um, was this idea of using the opportunity for the one-year grant to really think about some multidisciplinary um, lines of inquiry that we could apply for additional funds for. And so I think Lori has kind of covered what that might look like. But I think that the, the, the memorable takeaway is that we will be applying for additional you know, funding opportunities that might have a specific disciplinary focus or subset of the team of people who have worked together in this first incubator year, depending on what the theme of the, the next concept is. And I think that's really exciting, because I think that at the end of the day, we're gonna be garnering more resources and doing deeper work than what we're able to do in this first year, which is really to set the stage for that. Um, and in order to have a very concrete container, to make sure we did do some exchanging and working together in this incubator work year, um, there was a program that was pitched, <coughs> the second line or aim of the IRIS proposal. And Maria is going to speak about that because we're using the Earth Partnership platform um, for that. Sure. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Earth Partnership is an ecological restoration professional development for teachers, community members, and youth. It's a way of engaging in. Uh, stewardship or uh, you know the land ethic which feeds into what Lori was saying in terms of thinking of this project much bigger of a, more of a human ethic um, our program has been around since 1991 we work uh, in Wisconsin we work with Native American communities we work with Latino communities we also work globally in other countries um, with Mexico I think what's interesting is and the way we've approached it the previous picture if you want to show uh, as part of the delegation that came to Madison we had them go and visit places where they do uh, science outreach uh, and citizen science Actually, and, and give them example. Yeah, so this is, we went to, um, um, Mary Beth took them to the urban ecology in Milwaukee. Um, and the, uh, we took them to the Aldo Leopold Nature Center on the east side uh, and also the Arboretum. And then with our program, we did a few activities to showcase how we engage um, adults and youth in hands-on um, restoration activities um, and eventually that leads to some sort of restoration whether it's on school grounds or in community or natural areas but the way it's going to work in Mexico we're still kind of ironing that out because we do have a model of training teachers but there what we want to do is we want to do apart from working with teachers is also working with youth and then more importantly using the citizen science um, aspect in order to um, inform the museum so that's it's going to be a continuous and that would be a way that they can engage um, some of the marginalized communities some of the youth that would naturally not attend these um, this museum because of where it's located or the exhibit that they can feel a sense of ownership in the information that's presented so that's going to be in many ways a new way of um, taking our program to another level, and I think it fits, fits uh, very well with what Connie does in terms of youth empowerment and youth civic action. How do they feel empowered by what they do and feel that the community and society reinforces that in a way that's very positive? And then that can lead to improved educational you know, achievement, 
engagement in science, engagement in just the community efforts to try to transform their community in a restorative way. So, um, but I can, I can give you more information on our program and some of the other things we do, but um, I think with Mexico what's exciting is that it is a program that's been around, but in Mexico it might be slightly different because of the players and the communities that we're working with, um, which is wonderful. May, may, may I add a little bit mm -hmm. about the, sure. uh, your air mm -hmm. partnerships? Um, we have been uh, funding the air partnerships through a Title II grant. Title II is teaching quality education program. It's to uh, actually train teachers to learn how to teach science. And the part of the restoration with the Ho-Chunk and with the uh, you know, which is the other one? La Curue. Ojibwe. Uh, mm -hmm. La Curue Ojibwe, which is the new one. Uh, they actually teach by doing, mm -hmm. by learning how to restore the prairie, <coughs> how to restore the rivers, and, and then the teachers go back to their schools and incorporate the techniques so that the, 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 the students are engaged mm -hmm. and understand what it is about, you know, learning about doing science. So that is part of the uh, uh, of the mm -hmm. uh, partnership uh, yeah. situation. Obviously, internationally, we cannot use our title too. Or here, so we have to find something, some yeah. other way to do it. Uh, system administration okay. is uh, the central office right across the street. Okay, yeah, and I'm the, uh, the state director for Title II programs. And so that's, yeah. I, I coordinate the awarding and the review and uh, all of the, mm -hmm. all the grants that we award. Yeah, and this is an aspect of our program that we'll also take to Mexico in terms of talking with the staff of the museum um, about how they can think of moving forward better trained teachers to use restoration as a way to engage youth um, and also get them involved in citizen science and feeding back to the museum some of that data and the sharing of that data. So there are many layers to this. It's not just go in, do a training, leave. I mean, it's, it's really, it's, we're, we're really working to craft it that it serves the Guadalajara community, museum, staff, teachers, um, and that it'll serve them well as they go forward. So in the spirit of the values that Lori was discussing that are critical to the platform of this project, you can hear how the way, you can hear that notwithstanding the fact that we chose a successful program at UW to be that container, uh, there have been, uh, there's been a lot of thought work and a little bit of teeth gnashing trying to figure out how to make it work with a different context in a respectful two-way street kind of way and our partners there have really guided the way that they want to see this, this idea come into their context. Um, and similarly, we wanted to make sure we had a two-way street um, approach to visiting each other's sites. So um, the first thing we did was bring some collaborators from the team to Madison, as was previously mentioned. And does anybody want to just comment on this? I mean, I think from the team. Well, I think, uh, I mean, for those of you who don't know the Urban Ecology or the Aldo Leopold Nature Center, if you're thinking of or talking or trying to think how do we engage youth in civic action. You know, the urban ecology is a great example where they, they move into marginalized areas, they build these centers, they really work with the schools, they work with the community, they provide a place uh, not only for youth but also for families, and they in turn transform these areas. And that's, I think, in many ways what we're trying to, what they're trying to do with this museum in Guadalajara. So that was a great example and I know that um, the team from Mexico that came, they, they were just blown away. Um, just the possibilities, you know, how do you, how do you make this work? The other thing I would add in terms of what's relevant for people here is when you do these kinds of delegations, if you do them right in terms of really having people get to share their expertise in exchange, it creates opportunities for so many others. So if, you're, if University of Guadalajara is a partner that you're interested in having, we probably can do some networking around things because of these relationships. But the expertise uh, represented were three people from their, um, their design program. They're doing work around gender and mobility. They're doing work around rights to the city. 
Um, they're doing uh, just a lot, a lot of things that might be in an urban design, but really with a sustainability focus. And then one of the partners is mostly, he's really like an NGO leader. And when, they, when he was brought, this is why it's transformative for the partners also, because they might be in the same orbit, but when they're on a project with us together, they as a team travel together, and they didn't know each other. Mm -hmm. that, the three of them have worked together for 25 years, which is great, because it's a very stable team, and it means you know a lot of things work. Or at least they know when they don't work, they know how to fix them quick. Um, but this, this guy was also brought into that. So there's just a lot of uh, focus on relationships. And then when you're scrambling to find partners for grants, you, you have them because you've spent some time together. So it's, it's not hosting people here is really well spent time, I think, for um, building research um, partnerships. Yeah, and that's a theme I tried to also have some fun with in the slides is just there. There, you know, this picture is a, our like farewell dinner, um, Paul with um, Danielle, and I just think that even those like two to three days that we spent together really created a lot of camaraderie among the group, um, and that has carried through, and that you know goodwill together I think is going to be a theme as we continue to figure things out as we go. Um, so then we had to do our delegation visit to Guadalajara, or not had to, but got to. Um, and a team needed to be kind of figured out, out of the original grant proposal um, and some of the areas of interest that we knew we needed to address. And I'm actually going to let Lori talk a little bit about this because it's important that we emphasize that just those who got to go on the delegation visit or those of us here today are not necessarily the full potential team of people that would be working on this stuff. But um, I just thought maybe you wanted to comment on kind of what areas of interest are represented there and then Say something maybe about Tom or the others that are that didn't get to go, but are maybe well. I think I think that um, what we knew by design was happening, um, which did happen, and it, it's okay. Um, was we tended to emphasize the social science design part of this, and the only person who's really kind of a, a basic scientist on our team was Paul. And then we were working with this design studies unit. So when we look back to our core values we have a little more networking to do to really make sure that we have the scientific partners that we should have on the other side. Um, Eduardo comes here frequently and he has really long-term relationships with a number of people, so this is all right within our reach. But I think, um, you know, it's, we don't want to let the good be the enemy of the best, but I think that was, you know, that was the only thing that was a little bit missing um, from our team. But, it was, we did a really good job of spreading ourselves pretty well. Noah, we Feinstein, for example, happened to be on sabbatical, but we just, I know we bugged him enough times that he actually came along. And he's a critical person because he's a person who does environmental museums and uh, pedagogy issues at <coughs> UNM Madison. So we did, we did bring them something old and something new, people who they've known for a really long time and a lot of people who are new to the work. Um, another thing I'll comment on is, like little things are definitely happening. We have a proposal underway related to gender and transportation. We have a proposal related to rights to the city, which is a big conversation that's very relevant here. And that proposal, whether it gets funded or not, we've been able to fund a small curriculum development uh, project that Carolina Sarmiento will lead on rights to the city. So we'll, we'll have that curriculum impact. Um, and then, borrowing on the history of this um, getting the public involved in environmental monitoring so that there's that accountability. Um, so I think Eduardo's remembering this water project where they got all these mayors involved in an intermunicipal water monitoring project where community members did that. He's interested in doing that around water and air. Well, that was nearly 20 years ago, even though we hate to say that. And the technology around this has changed so much. So we start to be able to think about the you know, the um, big data strategies and the different kinds of sensors that can be used now that weren't around that. And those scientists are in the conversation. So Tracy Holloway has had conversations with Noah, with um, Feinstein, um, Sarli um, Macedo. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Me, thank you. Mikado? Yeah. She's a, a literature person, and it turns out that. Um, this site, in addition to having this museum, has a world-renowned film festival every year and a world-renowned um, book fair. So bringing literature in and bringing the humanities in is going to be really a joyful mm -hmm. thing. We've also brought in, just to give one more example of people engaging even though they're not there, we have an artist who happened to be doing a kind of sabbatical thing nearby. 
and she does she does design with our microenterprise project. She met with the Huichol community, which is the indigenous group. This is not a highly indigenous part of part of Mexico, Jalisco, but the Huichol are there and they have some of their craft traditions. So there'd be a great opportunity for them to conserve culture, be part of the museum by having a sales outlet in the